This lecture on price elasticity of demand is going to be broken up into two segments. The first half is going to focus on price elasticity of demand as measured using the total revenue test. And the second segment will be focused on price elasticity of demand as measured using the formula. And um, by the end of both lectures, you should be familiar with either method of calculating and estimating elasticity. So to get us thinking about the topic, take a look at this picture here, this pricing scheme. General admission, $10, students, $12, and under four, um, admission is $14. So clearly this is not something that we are used to seeing. Um, if anything, we're used to seeing an opposite pricing strategy um, because with this posted pricing strategy, uh, families are less likely to attend and people with small children are less likely to attend the event. Um, and we know from our studies in unit, units one and two that price is going to affect uh, the amount of something that people will purchase. And the law of demand tells us as price increases, people buy less, and as price increases, people buy more. Um, so elasticity takes that a step further and um, again focuses on how important pricing is from a business's perspective and takes a look at um, how the amount that people purchase changes in relationship to the amount that the price changes. So Elasticity of Demand explores how does a firm go about determining the price at which they should sell their product in order to maximize total revenue. A firm's goal is to maximize total revenue. Total revenue is the price of the product they're selling multiplied by the quantity of sales. So if you run a business, you want to sell as much as you can um, and you hope to get a good price for that product. So your goal is to have a high total revenue. Total revenue does not take cost of production into account. So total revenue is different than profit. Profit might be a more important number that we'll, we'll focus on later on in the course, but for now, we're just gonna look at total revenue and hope for that to be high. So here's an example <coughs> to get us thinking. Imagine you're a marketing manager for Intel. A new computer chip has been de developed and there's a decision to be made. Do you sell the new chip at a high price, such as $400, or a low price, such as $200? Well, let's take a look at the possibilities here. If we were to sell this chip at a high price, like $400, um, according to the demand curve here, 40 million chips per year would be sold at the price of $400, and 120 million chips would be sold at the price of $200. So if this company were considering dropping the price from $400 down to $200, um, According to the total revenue loss and total revenue gain, this seems like a good decision. All right. Now compare that to this alternate demand curve. According to this data, 40 million chips per year will be sold at the price of 400. But if the firm were to drop the price to 200, they would only increase their sales by 20 million chips per year. So if this were the demand curve for the product, then clearly dropping the price would not be an intelligent move because the total revenue loss is greater than the total revenue gain. So let's look at these two curves side by side. Um, what this shows us is assuming that the units of measurement are constant for both graphs, that we don't know if a high price or a low price is a better um, option for this company unless we know something about the demand curve for the product. Okay, with no additional information, you can't just say, oh, a high price is better or a low price is better. You have to do some research, some market research, and figure out how many people would buy at the high price or the low price and figure out where you'd make the most money. So the relative slopes of these curves um, has something to do with the elasticity of demand for the product. Like I just mentioned, um, slope depends on units of measurement. So in this example, we can compare the slopes of the demand curves because I told you that the units of measurement were constant between the two graphs. But that's not always true, especially if you're comparing two different goods and services next to each other and trying to figure out 
um, how the elasticities compare. So elasticity is important because it's independent of the units of measurement. Um, it helps us look at um, basically at percentage changes. All right, but actually the formula uses what we call the midpoint method. So, elasticity, total revenue, and expenditure. Um, let's just look at some different possibilities for elasticity here. At uh, one end of the spectrum, we have what we call inelastic demand. So we're just going to go through a few definitions here, and you'll need to know what these terms mean. Inelastic demand means that a 1% decrease in price will result in a less than 1% increase in quantity demanded. Or another way of putting this is when price drops, total revenue will decrease. And a demand curve with inelastic demand is going to tend to have a steeper slope, especially if we're comparing it to another demand curve with equal units. Um, the one with the steeper curve would be more would have more inelastic demand. So when I think of inelastic, I think um, inelastic doesn't stretch. So when price changes, the quantity demanded doesn't stretch um, as much with inelastic demand. The price change is going to be greater than the change in quantity demanded. So with inelastic demand, when price drops, total revenue will decrease, and when price increases, total revenue will increase. Elastic demand is just the opposite. So elastic demand tells us that a 1% decrease in price will result in a greater than 1% increase in quantity demanded. Or when price drops, total revenue will actually increase. And the demand curve for an elastic demand product is going to be more shallow um, or more flat than a demand curve for with inelastic demand if they're side by side with with constant units. Um, with elastic demand an increase in price would actually cause total revenue to decrease. So um, again elastic means responsive. Elastic means stretchy. So consumers are responsive to price changes. When price drops a lot more people are going to buy the product which will cause total revenue to to increase, or when price increases a lot less people are going to buy the product, which causes total revenue to decrease. So inelastic demand is like the second example with the Intel computer chip, and elastic demand was, it was like the first demand curve that was seen. Um, there is also such thing as unit elastic demand, which tells us that a 1% decrease in price will result in exactly a 1% increase in quantity demanded or total revenue will not change when the price changes. This is a unique, unique situation um, and there's a unit elastic point on every demand curve um, and, and we won't come across this very often but if according to your estimations or calculations total revenue won't change when the price does then we can classify that as unit elastic demand and um, a demand curve that's unit elastic across the entire spectrum would be bowed inward toward the origin. All right, so the total revenue test um, of price elasticity helps us figure out if demand is elastic or inelastic by observing the change in total revenue when the price of a good changes. Um, all else being constant. Ceteris Priebus means all else being equal. So if the only thing that changes in a market is the price of the good, and we know how many more or less people will buy when that price changes, then we can know what's going to happen to total revenue and therefore estimate price elasticity of demand for that good. So we already went over this a little bit, but this is a good way to summarize what we know now in a chart. And this chart's actually in your practice problem packet as well, um, or a variation of this chart. But this tells us when prices go up or down, how total revenue will be impacted based on the elasticity of demand for the product. So again, just um, instead of memorizing this chart, try to use common sense. Elastic means stretchy or responsive. Consumers are going to be responsive to price changes. So a 
according to the law of demand, we know when price goes up, quantity demand it goes down. And if demand's elastic, consumers are very responsive to that increase in price and a lot of people are going to stop buying it. All right? Or if price decreases and demand's elastic, consumers are going to be very responsive to that drop in price and a whole bunch more people are going to buy the product and total revenue will rise for the company that's selling the product. Um, with inelastic, it's just the opposite because consumers aren't going to be very responsive to those changes in price. So when price goes up, um, total revenue will also increase because not too many people are going to drop out of the market for buying the product. And when price goes down, total revenue will decrease because you're not going to gain a lot of new con customers by dropping the price. So um, if you were a business and you knew that demand for your product was inelastic, then it would be smart to raise the price. And if you do, knew that demand for your product was elastic, then it would be smart to drop the price if, you, if your goal was to increase total revenue. And again, with unit elastic demand, then when the price goes up or down, total revenue doesn't change. And that's a special circumstance. All right, so let's take a look at the demand curve and how um, the total revenue for the product is related to the demand curve. And this is also in your practice problem packet. I think I put the same set of graphs in there for you. So this just shows that every demand curve has um, a portion of the curve that is elastic, a portion of the curve that's inelastic, and a point on the curve that's unit elastic according to the definitions of elasticity. So in this elastic portion of the demand curve here, you can see that total revenue is increasing as the price is dropping. So we know that that means that demand's elastic. And then we hit a point of unitary elasticity where total revenue is at its peak. And then we have this other portion of the curve here to the right where as the price rises, total revenue increases and we know that that means that demand is inelastic because consumers aren't very responsive to that price change. Or if you wanted to think about it backwards, just moving down the curve, as price decreases, total revenue decreases. Again, telling us that demand is um, inelastic for the product. So something to pay attention to as you are going through problems and, and looking at graphs is that different points on the same curve um, are gonna could possibly have different elasticities depending on what portion of the curve is being shown to you. All right, so price elasticity of demand, as we know, is a measure of the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a good to a change in its price, all else being equal. And we'll wrap it up there for the first half of the price elasticity of demand lecture.